Have you ever like stumbled across something profound when you least expect it? Mm. Like maybe you're looking at a leaf, I don't know, noticing all the little veins and details, and it just sparks this like deeper understanding of, well, everything. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's those unexpected moments of depth we're exploring today, and we're doing it through poetry. Ah, poetry. Yeah, specifically Bruce Bond's Invention of the Wilderness. This collection just grabbed me. It's nature poetry, sure, but it's so much more than just pretty words about trees and stuff. Right, right. Bond uses nature as this, like, gateway to mm -hmm. explore those raw, sometimes painful emotions we all feel, but don't always talk about. It's incredible how he can take something as massive and seemingly permanent as, say, the Arctic in Islands of the Arctic right. and make it reflect something as personal as, well, memory. It's like the poem talks about melting ice caps, but it's also about how our memories fade, you know, how we lose bits and pieces of ourselves and the world around us as time goes on. That's it, that bittersweet feeling of knowing nothing stays the same. And that sense of change, especially the weight of loss, it just, it echoes through so many of the poems in Invention of the Wilderness. Bond, he doesn't shy away from the tough stuff. He leans into it, using nature cycles to help us understand our own experiences. Totally. I felt that really strongly in Paradise. Mm. It's subtle, but the way Bond talks about trees falling in the woods, even if no one's there to hear it, it reminds me of how we carry the echoes of relationships with us even after, you know, they're over. It's like that feeling when you're walking through a forest, right? You can just sense all the trees that have fallen and helped shape the landscape over time. We might not have been there to witness it, but their absence, it still shapes the world around us. Wow. Yeah. And I think Bond's suggesting relationships do the same thing. They shape who we become. It's true. And he revisits that whole idea of time passing in Niagara Falls. But this time, he's looking at something we usually think of as unchanging, the falls themselves. It's striking how he uses the idea of erosion. Yeah. Niagara Falls, the symbol of immense power, slowly wearing away over, what, thousands of years. It really challenges our perception of time. It makes you realize that even the most monumental parts of our lives, the things we think will last forever, they're all subject to change. It's humbling, for sure, to remember that even Niagara Falls won't last forever. Yeah. And yet there's this strange comfort in that, like accepting a universal truth. Definitely. But Bond... He doesn't leave us in this space of constant change and loss. In Coyote, he offers a different perspective. It's this yearning for connection, a solace found in the wildness of nature. Coyote. Absolutely. The poem introduces us to this man who's so drawn to the untamed spirit of coyotes, and he finds solace, even kinship, in their existence. It really highlights that primal need we all have to connect with the natural world. Like, by immersing ourselves in nature's rhythms, we can tap into a deeper understanding of ourselves. You know, it's more than just finding comfort in nature, isn't it? Bond also explores how the natural world gives us this, like, language for those emotions that are hard to put into words. Oh, totally. He's like, let's talk about grief, about longing, about the awe of, well, existing, but let's do it through the rustle of leaves and, like, the howl of the wind. Yes. He takes these big abstract feelings and grounds them in the concrete sensory details of nature, like in uh, a tower in the woods, for instance. Oh, yeah. He uses this image of a fire tower standing alone in the wilderness to explore how we process like difficult events in our lives. That poem really got to me. It's, it's the way Bond talks about fire, you mm -hmm. know, how it's destructive, sure, but it also clears the way for new life to begin. Mm -hmm. There's almost like a metaphor for how we get through tough times. Exactly. There's this parallel he draws between the natural cycles of destruction and creation and our own experiences of, well, loss and renewal. It's a good reminder that even when things fall apart, there's always potential for, for rebirth. I like that. And then there's Arrow, which takes a totally different approach to exploring our inner landscapes. I was struck by the poem's structure, like how he contrasts the straight lines of the arrow with the organic curves of the natural world. It's its fascinating. That's what I love about Bond's work, his use of form. The arrow, which we often see as a symbol of direction, of purpose, it becomes this vehicle for exploring the tension between the order we try to impose on our lives and the inherent like chaos of the natural world. It's true. It's like he's saying, no matter how hard we try to control things to like put them in neat little boxes, life, just like nature, will always find a way to surprise us. Yes, and sometimes those surprises can be beautiful, even transformative. And this whole idea of hidden depths, of a complexity that we can't quite grasp, it comes up again in a brief history of the human ear. 
Oh, that one gave me chills. The way Bond writes about the evolution of hearing, how we're always surrounded by sounds, some that we're aware of, and others that exist just outside our perception. Right. It's like he's hinting at the vastness of what we don't know, both about the world and ourselves. And within that vastness, there's a certain like humility in recognizing the limits of our own senses. Mm. We can't possibly grasp the entirety of experience. There's always more to discover, to unravel. Absolutely. And sometimes that discovery is about like tuning into the beauty of everyday things the way he does in crickets. I mean, who knew something as small as a cricket could make such intricate sounds? It's so easy to overlook the intricate beauty of the natural world, you know, especially mm. when we're caught up in our own lives. But Bond's poetry, it encourages us to pay attention to really listen and the crickets with their distinct songs and rhythms they become this like testament to the sheer diversity and interconnectedness of well everything right this reminder that we're part of something so much bigger than ourselves and you know the next part we'll see how bond takes this idea of interconnectedness even further blurring the lines between the wilderness outside us and the wilderness we carry within it's like Throughout this whole conversation, through all the loss, the resilience, even those crickets, Bond keeps circling back to something deeper, something inside us. Yeah, it's the idea of the wilderness within, that true wilderness isn't just out there in nature, it's also a part of us. It's in those uncharted parts of our hearts and minds. And he really dives into that in Arrow, right? And it's not even just the structure now, it's how the poem becomes this whole journey through grief, specifically the speaker losing his mother. Right. Right. That arrow, which felt like it was about searching for a path, it takes on a whole other meaning in the context of loss, like a metaphor for how grief can just pierce us, leave a mark that changes everything. It makes me think about the title of the collection, Invention of the Wilderness. Like Bond saying those intense emotional experiences, they can make us feel lost in our own lives, mm. like we're navigating this uncharted territory, but it's inside us. Maybe that is where the real wilderness is. And the parts of us shaped by loss, by memories, by trying to find meaning. When we're most vulnerable, that's when we really face ourselves. It's kind of scary, but also empowering. Like, we all have this inner wilderness, this potential for both huge pain and incredible resilience. And Bond doesn't shy away from how powerful nature is, how it reflects those inner struggles. The Stones of April, for example. Oh man, that poem hit me hard. The way he describes the hailstorm, so violent and unpredictable, it's like a physical representation of what it feels like to grieve. Exactly. That connection he makes between the external forces of nature, like a hailstorm, and our own internal chaos. Like a reminder that we're not separate from nature, we're part of it. And maybe, like if we accept that, if we acknowledge that wilderness both inside and out, maybe that's how we find some peace. Even in the middle of all the chaos. Kind of like that message in Dispatch from the Wilderness, that voice from the unknown reminding us we're all connected. Yeah, a reminder that even when we feel alone, we're still part of something bigger. As we come to the end of our deep dive into Bruce Bond's invention of the wilderness, it's amazing to me how he can take something we think we know, nature, and show us how much depth there really is. He really does. And through his words, we're invited to not only explore the physical world, but also those landscapes inside each of us. He's asking us to think about wilderness in all its forms, the untamed beauty of nature and the raw, unexplored parts of ourselves. And as we go about our lives, maybe we'll remember that line from Arrow, is that you, world? A simple question that makes us think about our place, our purpose, and how we're all connected to that wildness within.